continue in the SEC. Uh, not off to the start that we want to, but uh, at the same time, there's a lot of basketball to be played, and, and I really believe this team will, will continue to get better. Uh, uh, playing against a Mizzou team that's uh, probably uh, is trying to get wins just like we are, and uh, we've got to be able to defend the home court. Uh, they want a big game at a and uh, And, of course, with Kunzo's team, they're going to come in. They're going to get after you defensively and rebound the basketball with Tillman inside. The Geist kid is playing better. Uh, whereas our team, uh, we need to get into <clears> – <throat> We need to play uh, a total good game. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, our guys. Uh, I think we've been trying to win just with offense. and You, you can't just win with offense in our league. It's got to be a, a defensive effort as well. And so uh, we've got to continue to get better in, in a lot of different areas. I think taking care of the basketball is going to be one of them. We've got to take care of the basketball. We've got to be able to defend. Uh, we talked about getting off to a good start, and we started the game off right off the game with the, with the turnover. And you can't do that, especially on the road. But I look for our guys to come out and, and play with a, uh, a much greater sense of urgency, uh, uh, playing against a Mizzou team that, you know, obviously uh, they border. This, it's a border uh, game where the state's touched. So it's going to be a big game for us and a big game for them as well. Mike Daniels just in here, and he was pretty humble and took a lot of blame for the loss the other Day said he needs to play better. What, what are you seeing from Daniel, and what kind of response do you expect from him? Well, what you're seeing, uh, and that's the thing with the you know, inexperienced team, is that Daniel's getting a lot of attention, and, and rightfully so. I mean, he's played so well. And as that attention, two and three people around, you know, our spacing hasn't been the greatest. If our spacing is good enough, then you're going to see those guys kind of uh, be the recipients of, of some good passes for him. Uh, but they're coming at him. They're saying, hey, them other guys are going to have to beat you. And so our other guys are going to have to step up and, and make shots and finish off plays and, and take care of the basketball. I, I think he's giving us everything he can. Uh, but that's, that's what happens, like I said, when you go from not being on the scouting report to the top of the scouting report. And so uh, we know he can play a lot better. Uh, than, you know, with, we had too many turnovers, I thought, Bob. And then not only that, the momentum plays. Uh, you know, we cut the ball game to a 40, I think it was 49-43. And we had the ball a couple of times. Well, we got to come down, and now we got to execute. Yeah, because I didn't think they had an answer for Dan if we continue to have patience and get the ball in. And, uh, but I thought, we, uh, I thought we sped up and played too fast. And then, of course, uh, Ole Miss took advantage of that. But I think with Dan, we got to continue to uh, – he's got to be the centerpiece. He's got to be able to touch the ball, even if uh, he don't shoot it. Uh, I think he's a willing passer. He's not a black hole. And those other guys got to be able to play off of him. And that, to me, is the, the execution part that we've got to get better at. Cheney and both starts doesn't play nearly as well as off the bench. I mean, what do you do with that other forward spot? Well, we just got to keep, keep, keep trying it. Keep trying it. You know, whether it be him or even Gabe. We saw Gabe come in the second half, and I thought Gabe uh, gave us a, uh, a an attacking forward. I thought he was really active, trying to get the ball inside to Daniel uh, on the glass. Uh, uh, we just got to keep, keep brother-in-law, and I think with, with those guys. Yeah, like you said, you guys have been trying to win with just offense. And Daniel said the defense has not been good. They've just kind of been giving baskets. Uh, well, how do you guys fix that? And are you confident you can fix yeah, it? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can fix it. I think it's a matter of getting all the guys on the same page. you got to talk on defense. Uh, our defense is, is geared toward putting pressure on people. And I think we've been just letting people run the offense. I really, really have. I think we've kind of been playing on our heels, and, uh, but we've got to be a little bit more aggressive. And, you know, we've got to be able to be in rotation. You know, some things are going to – penetration is going to take place. We've got to be able to fix it. I mean, they – in the first half, they got like maybe three or four screen rolls. And so the offside help, you know, where, where guys are, are, are hugging the mans on the offside, that, that's, that's got to be a lot better. And we've been better throughout the year. So, I, uh, again, I just think it's a, it's a wake-up call for our guys because our defense, again – is what we got to hang our hats on. And then as your defense picks up, then I think it takes you to another level on offense as well. I guess in your eight years, you'd never lost more than three in a row. Just kind of one, how do you handle it? And two, how do you kind of convince a team they're not in like a free fall where it just keeps, keeps happening? Well, you know, I, I, I've talked about patience throughout this year, uh, Nate. And, uh, uh, and even as we played you know, in, in the Ole Miss game, we didn't shoot the ball well. 
And, and then, of course, now it just trickles down into your defensive side. Uh, I think there are some things that we're doing well. Uh, the bright spot in that game, you look at uh, Keyshawn Embry coming off the bench. I thought he gave us some quality minutes. I thought uh, Gabe uh, gave us some, some really good minutes. And so now if you get some of those guys that are starting out, to playing at the level they're capable of playing. Uh, I think we see Isaiah is, is really starting to – I think he's starting to play with that that pop that you got to play with. And I think that's even with our team. We got to play with a little more pop, a little more energy. Uh, I think that's got to be – we're an energy team. And, and once that energy is injected from a defensive standpoint, uh, then we're in an attacking mode offensively as well. You, you got a young team, but, but you're an experienced coach. I look up, you actually had a four-game losing streak at UAB. You guys went to the NCAA tournament your first year at Mizzou. You had a four-game losing streak. You I did? Had, yeah. You oh, I didn't know that. It's on, it's on, you. And, um, and you guys won 18 games. You didn't go to the NIT or whatever, but you still won 18 games. So uh, how can an experienced coach like yourself help navigate a young team through a rough patch like I this? I think you don't panic. I think that's the biggest key. You don't panic. And if they don't see you panic, they, they're going to be okay. I think uh, what we do works. And we've seen that, you know, yeah, early on. Now we just got to be able to put it together here and uh, netting like a good, some good winning it would take care. But I think, you know, get in the gym and continue to work and, and continue, continue to believe in each other. I think one thing about it, these guys continue to believe in one another and uh, we're, we eventually go with the hump. We're becoming, uh, we're becoming a team and uh, there's a learning curve. Uh, you're not going to see Mason Jones go one for ten. I mean, he was one for ten, and that's one of our leading scorers in conference play. Uh, so we got to have some more guys click on some of the cylinders that uh, uh, that, that can help us offensively, and then defensively. I think we really got to dig into the trenches and become one of those teams that you know what. If if we don't score, then you don't score. Uh, I think that's what you got to have the mindset. Get stingy on it. With Mizzou, they lost Jonte Porter before the season. How do you think they've adjusted to playing without him? And I know you know. The family, just kind of what are your thoughts on him, you know, not being well, able to you play know, this year? Obviously, you know, when, when it took place, uh, obviously my thoughts and prayers were with him and his family. Uh, you, you think about Michael, John Tay, and a and, uh, great family. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I think Kunzo, you know, you got to deal, you got to play with the hand that you dealt with. And so, with that being said, you got to formulate and create that to be that team that you got this year. And I think he got some young guys that are pretty good, uh, and very much like us. You know, they have Geis, who's running the show. You got Big Tillman, who's down there. Perrier, seemed like he's been there for five years. Uh, uh, so they got some quality pieces. The transfer from Illinois, who's uh, one of the top shooting three-point uh, percentage-wise, I think, in our league. So they've got a collection of players that can really – they can shoot the basketball. Uh, and, and hopefully uh, – uh, we won't let them shoot as much as they want to. Uh, we we got to come out with a sense that, you know, I always talk about that sense of urgency. But I think really from a defensive standpoint, come in and, and establish in the tempo we want. They're, they're the top three-point shooting team in the league. What what kind of pressure does that put on your perimeter defense? How how big a key will that be Wednesday night? I, I think what's got to be important, we got to be there on the, sh on the shot. We got to be there when they catch it, when they shoot. They catch the ball and ready to shoot and make them drivers and make them penetrate and, and be in rotation where we get out there. And they're going to make some shots. Uh, but at the same time, I like to see us, even as they make those shots, us get down the floor, get the tempo going to, to our liking where it's up and down the floor and, and utilize our bench. And, um, Daniel was talking about he's trying to be more of a vocal leader. How, how important can that be with a young team? Where you, tr you talked the other day about the confidence being kind of shattered. Um, how can a guy like Daniel help his teammates regain their confidence? Well, I think that's important. I mean, we, we had, uh, uh, you know, a, a function this morning. And I was, uh, it was good to see them out there with the kids. Uh, um, uh, Martin Luther King celebration over at the, uh, uh, the Hyper. Uh, it was the Dreamers. I think it's called Dreamers. And uh, our guys were, were, they all were there. And it's amazing how, you know, them just being in that setting and, and uh, uh, just bonding. Uh, making it a great event for the kids that are there. And the guy that spearheaded most of it was, was Daniel out there on the floor. So uh, I've seen him grown. You know, Daniel, he's a young. And when you talk about it in basketball terms, uh, but just to see him uh, step up and, and try to be that vocal leader, I think that says a lot about our team. And I think that's going to be important. The leadership and that leadership's got to take place out there on the floor. There's a lot of pressure playing college basketball. How good is it to have the guys maybe hang out with some kids that aren't worried about, you know, who made a shot or who had a turnover and just 
kind of be around, you know, kids that just they, they they just appreciate being around the guys and kind of childlike joy or whatever you want. I think to call it was cool. It. I'm looking at them guys out there on the floor, you know, taking pictures with them, uh, and these are kids in our area that uh, don't get a chance to. Uh, to, to bond with our guys out there shooting basket. Can you imagine uh, Daniel blocking your shot or you scoring on? I mean, I saw a couple of kids trying to dunk on Daniel, so they they, they got a big kick out of that. So it was it was kind of neat to get away from it, you know, the day to day grind. And uh, but now we get ready to go to the grind. Have a good day. All right. All right.